Hi hey guys, welcome to another video here in the channel. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a rigging. And rigging is one of those things that can be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna be showing you guys a very cool process that's gonna make this element or this general exercise a lot simpler. We're gonna go through creation of the joints, skinning of the element, and we're gonna be creating the control rig here inside of Unreal, so that in the next part of the series, we can animate and play around with our element here directly inside of the engine. It's a very, very cool process we have right here and uh yeah hopefully it's gonna be fairly easy to follow so let me know at the end what you think about this and let's go very well guys so we're gonna start with the chest right here and the first thing i want to do is i want to plug in the materials for the element you can see that we already have the material right here i'm gonna call this chest v1 because we're gonna have our original chest and i'm gonna be using the substance plugin this is a plugin that if you're not using it you're missing out and you're losing a lot of time here inside of maya you can enable this plugin by going into windows settings and preferences plugin manager and then looking for the substance plugin and make sure everything is enabled once you have that if you go to the substance tab and you go click on this button right here we're going to be able to connect the workflow for arnold in this case and we're going to be able to select the base color the normal and the roughness and just connect everything automatically into a new material so if we grab both elements and we go to a add an existing material with right click we're going to be able to select this ai standard, sur standard surface one and as you can see when i press number six we get all of our amazing textures ready to go you don't have to change any of the color spaces everything is just ready to render it's an amazing amazing way to uh just connect your textures very very quickly so here since i am going to eventually bring this into unreal actually at the end of this video we're going to be bringing this into unreal i want to make sure that we have the m chest selected now we need to go through the rigging process and i specifically chose this asset when we first think thought or thought about this series because i knew rigging is or i know rigging is one of those like really complicated things that doesn't have to be i'm going to try to explain it as easily as possible with what's coming right now so what we're going to do here is we need to understand how rigging works we're going to go to the rigging tab and the first thing we're going to use is joints i'm going to go to my right view and before i even start rigging anything i always like to ask myself what kind of uh, like element or functionality do i want my objects to have and in this case, of course, we know that we want this lid right here, the pivot point of this lid to be back here, probably around oh, there. And we want to be able to, of course, open the chest. However, that's not all. We, we also have other things. For instance, we have these little handles on the side that we could very easily add a simple joint so that we can like move them a little bit, like just rotate them if needed. If we were doing like a very stylized thing, we could do more complex rigs to to add to the whole thing but again in this case i don't think it's really necessary so i am going to be adding the following let's go to a front view i'm going to be adding the following joints i'm going to use my blue pencil right here to do some annotations and usually on a rig we're going to have something called the root joint the root joint is the main joint that controls everything else in the rig and it's usually used to place the object on our scene usually usually this root joint has no influence over any of the other uh, like geometries or, or elements it's only going to be there again so that we can move it and place it around then i'm going to have one more joint that's going to be um actually it's going to be probably on top of the root joint but we could let's add it right here to to make it less confusing and that's going to be my main chest joint so whenever we want to move our chest we're going to be using that main joint right there then of course we're going to need another joint right over here which is the one that's going to be allowing me to open and close the lids and for the matter of adding a little bit of extra explanation here into the rigging process i am going to be adding a left and a right or right and a left handle joint so that we can move the handles around if we need to so it could be that when we open the chest the little handles just like move a little bit and then close as if we just let the the chest fall or something or maybe we do an animation later on where when the character is pushing the chest and when it falls we want this little thing to do like a little bit of a flap right so if we if we add more functionality to our rig we're going to allow the animators to express themselves a lot better once they are doing their stuff so that's it we got our main planning let's start adding our joints so i'm going to go here to my main joint and i'm going to create one little joint right here and this little joint i'm going to zero it out so that it's right there now, one thing before we start rigging, this is very important. It is extremely recommended that you do have the proper scale. This is a huge, huge chest. So I'm going to make a cube right here. And the cube, I'm going to change the information here. I'm going to make this like a 60 centimeter, uh, maybe 80 centimeter cube. So on the width right here, I'm going to say 80. 
and then on the height i'm gonna make this a another 80 i would say and then on the on the depth i'm gonna make it 60 so it's not as uh, deep so that's roughly the volume that i would like this chest to be if you want to have a like gi ginormous chest you can do it as well actually i'm gonna modify it a little bit so it's gonna be right around there I'm going to grab my chest elements right here. I'm going to control J to group them together. And I'm going to just scale this down a little bit. Something like that feels a little bit better. And uh, I've already brought this into Unreal. So I know that's very, very huge. If you mess up and you need to like rescale or something, don't worry. It's very easy. You can use the rig, but ideally you want to rig at the proper scale. So shift P in this case, and we're going to freeze transformations to make sure that our geometries go back to zero. We delete that group. We don't need it anymore. So now this joint, I'm going to share with you guys the most important, one of the most important things about the joints. First, I'm going to make this bigger with the radius. It's going to have a radius of five so that we can actually see it and the joints they have a really interesting thing joints are an element here instead of maya that has a transform node so that allows us to translate rotate and scale them but they also have something called a joint orient which is how is this joint oriented in regards to the world so if i were to let's say rotate this thing around like this you can now see that there's those like inner gizmo lines right there and even if i freeze transformation those inner gizmo lines they do not go away so the the joint remembers that this rotation is the rotation that we like apply to it and that like information that we are saving is what makes ringing so important now, an easier way to, to see this information is by enabling something called the local rotation axis. You're going to see it here in display, transform display, local rotation axis, which is, again, the little gizmo, the direction in which this joint is located. So we can rotate this joint. You can see that its local rotation axis moves. And then when we freeze transformation, or if we freeze transformations, the local rotation axis remembers that information. But you might wonder, where is it? It's not right here. Rotate is set at zero. It's saved on the joint node down here where it says a joint orient. See this? So the joint orient has this minus 30, 84, 7.3. If we zero all of this axis, out all of this joint orients out you're gonna see that our joint returns to the origin super important thing to understand our local rotation axis for our elements why because we're going to be using this local rotation axis to drive the way we're going to be modifying our uh, our rig in this case so the root joint i'm going to leave it exactly like this we don't need to change it i'm just going to call this a root underscore gnt because it's my root joint now we need to create a little chain so i'm going to go back here to my rigging element going to create another chain i'm going to press click and then shift and click up top i'm going to turn on this option right here on the viewport which is x-ray joints so that we can see the joints and this new chain that we've created i'm going to change the radius to like i don't know like 10 so that we can actually see it and there we go let's hide the geometry alt one or sorry alt two is a really cool shortcut for hiding geometry by the way let me turn on a card neck and now that we have this, we can uh, we can see if we select the joints right here. Let's go to the to the joints right here. If we select them, we can go to the local rotation axis again. Which, by the way, I'm going to create a button for it. I'm going to create or see the local rotation axis, and you can see that something interesting is happening. The first joint, which is going to be our main joint, is not aligned to the world. Okay, the first joint, which is going to be I'm going to call this a chest underscore joint. This one's going to be called lift underscore a joint. The first one, as you can see, it's not aligned to the world. It's aligned or it's using X to point to the next joint. This is very important. It's called the joint orient, how the joints are ori oriented between each other. Usually when you have a single joint like this one, like the root joint, it's going to be on the world and that's that's fine. But when you have a chain of uh, joints, imagine, for instance, a hand with multiple like uh, little joints in there, you're going to have a, a hierarchy of nodes that are going to be following each other. And each joint in that chain needs to point to the next joint with one of its axes so that it's easy to move. I'm going to give you the reason why this is so important. If I grab a chain of joints, let's do a chain of joints right there. There we go. Let's set a big scale as well so that we can see them. All of these joints, or at least this ones, the first ones, are all pointing towards each other. If I move them or rotate, you can see them that I can do this movement where by just moving one axis, I can curl them up and create this sort of like tail or finger or, um, I don't know, like a ponytail. Like there's a lot of things in rigging that uses this sort of like connection. It's called an FK chain, forward kinematic, where the movement is going forward. Now, if by any reason this thing was rotated, Actually, let me show you something really crazy here. I'm going to grab all of the joints right here. I'm going to shift P to unparent them. And then I'm just going to like do some crazy rotations with all of them. 
Okay. And then I'm going to start reparenting them. It might seem, it might seem at first glance that all of these elements are following the exact same pattern. But the thing is, they're not. If we check the, the joint orientation now and we try to move them with a single axis, which if you guys remember, it was the Z axis at first. Now, look at this. They're all going in like completely, completely different directions. So in keeping, keeping tabs or, or making sure that you, you know how the rigs are flowing is super, super important. For instance, I can see here that the first joint is pointing with X to the next one, but the next one is now aligned to the world because it's the last one. It doesn't have any other joint to be aligned to. Can we fix that? Yes. If we want to make sure that it's the exact same as its parent, which I actually think it might be a, actually it's going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to explain why it's going to be a bad idea later on. We're going to leave this one right here, but if we wanted to, we could just like move this thing to make sure that it's uh, like rotate this 90 degrees to the side and then freeze the transformations as what we did before and that's going to clean up the rotation of our element there's always going to be some translation on your bones that's normal because that translation refers to their relationship to the previous bone so even this one right here has a little bit of translation let's make sure that this is set to zero because we want this perfectly symmetrical and uh, and this one is parented to the last bone this one of course does not have any translation because it's on the origin so, okay, we got our first like a uh, pair of bones. Let's go for the next one. I'm going to press all two again to bring my element together. And here's one thing that we can do. If I want the axis of this thing, of this um, like bone to be on the pivot point or on where this thing will be pivoting from, one of the things that we can do is we can look for the average point of this element, which is right there. If I rotate this thing, you can see mm, that's not really the rotation that I want. I want to be able to have the rotation probably on the mixture between this guy and this guy. That to me looks like a better point. Like if I were to rotate the whole thing, that looks like a better pivot point for the whole thing. One thing that we can do here is we select those elements right there and I am going to go to uh, the rigging tab. I'm going to create a constraint or sorry, a deform. I'm going to create a cluster. And there's going to be a point right there, a cluster, and that cluster is the point where I want to snap my bone. So if I go to rigging, I can create a new bone and then just snap this. Where's my bone? Let's create a new bone. Just anywhere where it is. There we go. And let's grab this and the cluster. I'm just going to grab the bone and snap this to the cluster right there. As you can see, this is now living right there on the cluster. And this is the bone that's going to be rotating my left hand. That's a, that's a, just a very quick way to, to find a point in space. There's other ways to do it. But it might seem a little bit weird that we have this thing right here. Like, why wouldn't we have the controller or the bone on the element? And the reason is because we want this thing, when we rotate this thing around, we want this thing to be able to move the handle. And if we have it down here, then the rotation is going to happen down here. And we don't want that. We want it to happen roughly at the area where the hinge would be, which in this case is that one right there. Now, there's an important thing that we need to do for this little bone. We need to make sure that the rotation of the bone, this is important, this is why I did not change the rotation on this first bone. Every single bone that we have on the, uh, what's the word? On the, um, let's do minus nine. Oh, minus, ah, oh, come on. Minus. Every single rotation that we have inside of Maya works in an X, Y, and C matter. And the calculations, this is performance, this is very technical, but the calculations that Maya does whenever it tries to identify how an object is being rotated, it always follows the X, Y, and C. So if we leave this bone right here, as you can see, the local rotation axis that we're going to be using to rotate this is going to be Z. And I don't want that. I don't want C to be the rotation. I want X to be the rotation. However, X is not pointing in the right direction. I need to rotate rotate in this case x 90 degrees to this side or minus 90 degrees sorry i got the my uh, keyboard with the wrong language there we go so we're going to rotate this 90 degrees so that the x is pointing forward and when we rotate um what's the word when we rotate um there we go. When we rotate X, we're going to be able to get the proper rotation. That way, again, we're saving Maya a little bit of performance time because instead of having to evaluate all the way up to C, because it needs to check X, there's no movement. Why? There's no movement. And then I check C, that's the movement, that's when I do the animation. If we want to save ourselves a little bit of that, we can rotate this little bone right here. This is not something that you're going to be doing everywhere with like characters and stuff. Usually, the order of bones, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. I think that's why rigging is so complex sometimes. 
But in this case, I'm just going to do it for this one. And we're going to delete history or freeze transformation and delete history. That's fine. So this one right here, we're going to rename this and we're going to call this left handle joint. And now we want to mirror this because this has the exact position that we want. Well, this is going to be parented to the main body, of course. And we want to mirror this so that we have the proper handle on the other side. And to do that, it's very simple. You just select the joint. You go to skeleton mirror joints and you're going to look for l underscore and r underscore and we're going to be mirroring across the y and z axis which means that we're mirroring across the x axis and we're going to say apply very important mirror functions we want to mirror behavior i'm going to explain why in just a second so when we do this as you can see the roca rotation axis of this joint right here is the opposite it's flipped from this one why is that because if we if we and i'm going to look very funny doing this but if we did not change orientation when we rotate this one up this one would rotate down and we would get this sort of effect however if we're doing behavior rotating both of them up or both of them down will match now because the axes are inverted so it's very very important that when we do a mirror especially for arms and legs and things like that we mirror behavior so that we can select both elements and when we rotate they rotate in the proper way and that's it that's pretty much all of the rigging that we need to do here for our chest this i would say is the first part if you're following along which hopefully you are i recommend getting to this point before moving on to the next section which is going to be skinning so let's go skinning skinning is a super important part because it's the part that's going to tell us hey which parts of my object are going to move with each of the different elements of our object right here's a couple of things that we can do we can do something called a parent skinning i'm not sure if that's what it's called but if you're working instead of maya you don't want to go through the skinning method you just want to parent something i could literally just grab this guy right here and then shift p to the top right here and now if i rotate the bone the lid is gonna move one thing that i'm definitely noticing as you can see right there is that the position of this bone is not exactly where it's supposed to be so let me show you how we're gonna fix that because it's very important First, I'm going to shift P and unparent the handles for just a second, because one of the things that I need to do is I actually now let's, let's just keep it simple. This is important for characters, but in this case, it's not really going to matter. So I'm just going to move this to the back. There we go. Because I don't want to I don't I, I know this is breaking the local rotation axis that I talked about. But since this is an object that's not going to deform like a character, it's really not that big of a deal. So I'm going to just position it right there. And very important, we're going to freeze transformation so that this has zero information on the rotation. OK, so now, as I was mentioning, if we grab this guy and this guy and we just hit P, I could literally just grab the bone and that's it. My lid is working as expected. However, a lot of softwares, they do not like working that way and especially again for characters creatures and all this stuff you're going to be doing something called the skinning now again i picked this asset because the skinning for this element is supposed to be a little bit easier than for a full character because there's no deformation everything moves as solid masses however we are going to be going through the through the method so here's what we're going to do first of all i'm going to grab both elements right here and we're going to combine them into a single object this is so that we only have one thing called one skin cluster the skin cluster is the node here inside of maya that does the calculation on how how each face, how each vertex of the object is going to be moved by the skeleton. You can have multiple skin clusters, but again, from a performance standpoint, that could potentially become a little bit complicated. So in this particular case, we're just going to keep this as chest. It's going to be called chest at geo. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of the joints that I want to have some influence in, which in this case is the chest, the lid, and the handles. And I'm going to select the chest at geo geometry. We're going to go to skin. We're going to go to bind skin. We're going to use the bind to select the joints. Very important. Bind method. You can use whatever. We're going to clean it up. I actually like using geodesic voxel. It's a fun one. Uh, but again, closest distance works. It's, it's perfectly fine. I'm just going to do this geodesic voxel. Skinning method. We're going to keep classic linear. Normalize with interactive. I personally like to keep the max influences to three. Yes, this gives you a less smooth like deformation. Again, for characters, in this case, it's not going to matter. And we're going to hit apply. When we do this, Maya is going to do its calculation prepare our model and once the process is done we're gonna get some colors on our uh, skeleton and if i move one of our skeletons we should see some movement that's really weird okay there is movement but all the movement is on this bone right here that's fine because it, it found that it was easier to just rig everything to this lower bone perfectly fine this is very very normal I'm going to go to normal mode here to number five and we're going to go to the skinning tab and to the sp paint skin weights tool we select the object and we go to skin paint skin weights and this is how it works i'm going to double click the element 
and this is what we get. This tool is very confusing. Whenever I teach skinning and rigging, my students always struggle with this because it's um, it's a very technical process, but hopefully I'm explaining this as, as simple and as um, efficient as possible. So as you can see, if we go to each of these elements, you're gonna see that there is no weight attached to those elements. I usually like to go down here and use this geometry color ramp. And you can see that right now the chest joint, which is our first chain chest or our first joint in this chain has all of the influence. We don't want that. We would like, for instance, for the right handle, this part right here, to have the influence of this element right here. And the way we do this is we go into paint mode and we literally start painting weight into our element i'm gonna bring the value all the way up there we go so as you can see i'm painting weight into this joint right here so i'm telling hey you my friend need to move this vertex right here now if i grab this element and i rotate this you can see how those vertex are actually like pushing through the element because it it understands that it needs to control those vertices however since the topology of this element is really complex as made out of multiple objects, we need to be a little bit more efficient here. I'm going to go to the select tab. I'm going to double click this guy and double click this guy. And then I'm going to go back to the paint tab and I'm just going to say replace. It's going to be replaced and I'm going to replace with an opacity of one and a value of one. And I'm just going to say flood. So now, as you can see, the right handle is going to be controlling all of these values right here. I need to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go to the left handle. Let's go to select. I'm going to double click this guy and then shift double click this guy, go back to paint and fluff. So now if I check the bones, as you can see right here, and I move this one, these guys are going to be rotating my handles properly, which is exactly what I want. I want to be able to generate this sort of effect and the both on both sides should be working very nicely. There we go. Now we need to go and do the lift and it's the, pretty much the same process. So I'm just going to go to my paint weight tool. I'm going to go to the lift and I'm going to go to select tool. It's definitely going to take a while, so I'm just going to skip forward here. And uh, what I need to do is I just need to select all of the vertex points on the top part of the lid. And once everything is selected, I'm going to be able to just flood the top part with a value of one. And that's going to pretty much um, uh, transfer all of the control to the joints. So again, I'm just going to skip forward here. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to continue right before we flood. There we go. So as you can see, all of my points are selected. I'm going to go back to paint and I'm going to say fluff. That's going to fill everything with white. Uh Oh, we got a little bit of a problem down here. And on this side right here, you can see that we've uh, forgot to select a couple points and we selected ones that we didn't want to select. So for instance, I realized that this ones were missing. Let's flood them real quick. Also this uh, side element. So let's go to select. Technically, again, you could like manually paint all of this. But to be honest, for this particular asset, I find it way faster if we do it this way. Now, what happened here is when we flood an area or when we, let's say, steal the, the values from the area, that means that on the original one, now this guy is missing that point. So a vertex can only have an influence of one. And we decide how we split that difference. In a character, for instance, when we're doing facial rigging or body rigging or whatever, we play with those like amounts of effects so that we can get this very nice stretchy and expressive uh, deformations. However, for rigid bodies like this guy right here, you don't really want want to have that sort of effect unless you're going for something really cartoonish so i can see that's missing um this one and this one let's go to select mode we select that one and that one let's go to paint mode and flood and we're just missing this one right here paint and flood and there we go so everything seems to be looking good of course the real test is to go to our element and rotate around and see that we're not modifying or moving things that we don't want to move. For instance, right there, look at that. We have a little bit of an issue here, and you can see it right there. There's some sort of vertex or something that's trying to keep itself like closer to the object. So let's very quickly go here to our paint effect again. We can go again to select, and then just select that guy right there. We can even double click to make sure that we're selecting everything. Go back to paint, and in this case, we're going to paint to the lid and flood. As you can see, that fixes that little error right there. And this is the part that a lot of people hate about rigging. The fact that you need to go pretty much and do a lot of tests to make sure that when you're moving things around, that they're moving in the best possible way. So, yeah, um, I always get, or not always, but I frequently get asked about like a jobs in the industry. Riggers are one of those jobs that there's a lot of demand for. There are a lot of automatic rig tools for characters, but for a lot of things like this guy right here, you need to be a rigger in order to to be able to do it because most of the tools are not prepared to handle custom items or custom effects like this one 
So that's it, my friends. With this, we've now covered the second part of our element, which is the skinning process. We're going to go to the final one. And this final one is only going to be, um, what's the word? Or we're actually going to be doing this inside of Unreal. So we're going to close this first video today with the preparation of the actual rig inside of Unreal. But we needed to get to this point right here. In the next video, we're going to do the animation and I'm going to show you how to do the animation inside of Unreal because there's new pipelines that have been uh, appearing with 5.3 and 5.2 and I think it's very worth it to have it. You could of course do your traditional like animation already here. You could animate directly into the bones, although it's not ideal. Uh, but yeah, so let's now go into Unreal. Very well, so we're inside here of Unreal. I already have Unreal 5.3 at the time of this recording. This is the most recent one. And we have this Imaginarium, which is the one that we're going to be using. It's a 5.3 third-person based template. There's nothing fancy about this. Just download the engine, launch this, use the preset files, and you're going to be in the exact same position as I am. While this is loading, let's very quickly jump into Maya and let me show you how to export this properly because this is one of the things that people struggle quite a bit. In order to export a rig from Maya, you need to select all of the deformation joints and the geometry. And you're going to export this. I'm going to export the selection as, a, as an asset. So I'm going to go here to the chest asset. I'm going to export this as the chest FBX, which should be like my main element. I might even create a new folder here called animation. Just new folder, whatever. And here we're just going to have chest. And I know that inside of this new folder is where the chest is going to be. Very important. Over here, we do want to include all of these things. History, channel, expression, that's fine. That's the FBX stuff. On the geometry, very important. A smooth mesh. Uh, no, actually, we don't want smooth mesh. We do want to have tangents in my normals. Actually, I'm going to just leave everything as default. I'm not sure if I change any settings. I don't think so. We do have. We do want to have, export smoothing groups. No reference assets, it's fine. We're going to export the animation, but we're gonna not going to bake any animation. And the reason why we want to export animation, this is very important, is because we want to be exporting this skins over here, the deformation of the model. And I'm just going to hit export. And as you can see, this thing is already exported. Now, inside of Unreal, let's go right here. One of the things that I love about this template is that we got the third-person character ready to go. So at any point, we can just like literally start playing and see how our assets look in a like video game so over here i'm gonna go to the chess menu or to the chess folder that i've already created i'm gonna right click and i'm gonna import something to this element what is it that i'm gonna import at this chest right here and when we import this is very important you need to make or tell this that this is in a skeletal mesh okay if you don't tell that this is in a skeletal mesh then what we're gonna do next is not gonna be working as intended so we're gonna keep this skeletal mesh as this is we're gonna import the mesh as you can see on the skeleton there's there's none right now because there's no other skeleton that looks like this inside of Unreal, inside of this Unreal project. So we're going to be creating a new skeleton. If you're re-importing a skeleton, you're probably going to see the, the little like asset already displayed right here. Here you can change the scale. So if you know that you're working at a very big scale or a very small, small scale, you could like potentially change it here. And I'm just going to say import. Ideally, since we had a proper material inside of Maya, we should also get the material right here. However, sometimes you might need to rebuild it. I'm going to show you how to properly connect the textures right here because we're probably only going to be getting like one or two textures. Sometimes not even that. Like right now, we didn't even get like the normal map or anything. So yeah, there we go. If I would just drag and drop this chest into the, into the world, look at that. And <laughs> we got a chest. Our little chest is ready here inside of Unreal. Got some very nice shadows. Now, the only thing we need to do is to set up the material properly. I'm going to, of course, go back here to our element. So let's go to our assets, to our chest. And we're going to go to the base color, the metalness, the normal, and the roughness. This is not using the Unreal Engine like uh, thing that we normally use. So in this case, we do need to do two things. For the roughness, I need to enter into the roughness texture. And I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to change this option that says sRGB. I'm going to turn it off. So we don't want to have any color correction. We want the blacks and the whites of this image to remain exactly as they were. Otherwise, it's not going to look exactly like it looked on a Substance Painter or inside of Maya. And for this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go over here and we're going to remove the element. Otherwise, we're going to get like semi-metals and semi-plastics or things like that, which we don't want. Once we have that, we just open the uh, element right here. Let's uh, delete that image, which we don't need. And we just bring all of our textures. And if you were a little kid and you learned how to put the triangle shape into the triangle slot, then this should be fairly easy. Texture goes into base color. Or the base color goes into the base color. This is the normal map. RGV goes into the normal RGV. This is the metalness. This one goes into the metallic. And this one is the roughness, which, of course, goes into the roughness. That's it. 
as you can see the material here is looking nice as a preview we got a, our proper glossiness and everything so we just save that real quick and if we go to our world look at this beautiful chest already ready in our scene and uh, yeah that's it like look at that that looks like a really nice asset i know from a game optimization it's not like super super um optimized but i'm gonna show you guys later on it's gonna be like a bonus chapter at the end of this series how we can use nanite to uh make this super super affordable performance wise so yeah that's the chest right there the last thing that we need to do and and i'm sorry that this is at the very end i i know a lot of people are not gonna be seeing this because not everyone waits until the very end but we're gonna be talking about the control rig here inside of um of unreal so let's go to it so we've been talking about how Unreal has been investing a lot of money into their engine so that more games and more people use them as their main tool. And one of the things that was a huge, huge thing back in the beginning of, uh, of Unreal Engine 5 was the control rigs. One big issue that we have inside of the 3D world is that if you rig something on an engine like Maya or, Blend or Blender, only certain things are transferable from one point to another. So if I make a character in Blender, I add the joints and I properly rig them with the skin and everything when i send that to maya the only thing that maya is going to receive is the joint information and the um the skin weight because all of the constraints all of the parents all of the things they're not like translatable comparable compatible i'm not sure what the word is but they don't work between each other and the same thing happens here with unreal unfortunately so if we create controllers which are this like very nice loops that we sometimes see in our rigs if we can create controllers in maya and use them to control our chest when we bring the chest into unreal we lose that and let's say we wanted to modify or change the animation it becomes very complicated to do so without these controllers so again in the past couple of versions unreal has added a way for us to add our own controllers create our own control rig and it's actually fairly fairly simple you're gonna go here to the skeletal mesh you're gonna right click and you're gonna go to skeleton and we are gonna go sorry create we're gonna create this control rig slot and as you can see, we get this new node right here. I'm going to double click and this is what we're going to get. So we get a new window. You, you know, Unreal loves having like different viewports and windows for every single thing. And this is the thing that's going to tell us or the, the thing that's going to give us the ability to move and like work with our element. You can see that we have our root join, we have our chest join, we have our lid join, we have our handle joints right here. And this is our, the ones that we're going to be using to create our controllers. The way we create our controllers, again, rather simple. You just go, let's say, to the lid joint right here, and you're going to right-click, and you're going to create a new control. And what this will do, as you can see, is it will create a new rig control right there on the lid. That's that little, like, a sphere that we have right there. And we can customize this. If we go here to the options, we have this shape. I'm going to be using a circle thick, and I'm going to change the color to, I don't know, like a green element, because I feel like when you open the chest, you should be happy. Another thing that you can see is that we have the orientation of the element. It's it's properly connected to the to the joint, right? So the X axis is, is nice, but the ring is, is looking a little bit weird. So here again on the shape, I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to make this two by two by two. So I want to make this uh, rig even bigger, maybe. Let's do a three by three by three. There we go. And then what we can do is we can rotate this. I believe it's 90 degrees right here. Nope. Oh, have the shape. There we go. 90 degrees on Y. There we go. And that way, it makes a little bit more sense for an animator to pick this element and uh, just rotate it like this, which is what we want, right? We want to be able to rotate the element like that. Again, we can change this. I think I'm going to make this scale even bigger. So let's do a 5 by 5 by 5. There we go. And now we do need to do a little bit. Sorry, let, let me, let me, I'm going to remove Karnak because there's a lot of menus here. So sorry if you don't see the shortcuts, but uh, I find it a little bit easier to explain. So once we have this element, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to right click on this guy and we're going to unparent. So over here, we're going to unparent so that the rig is separated. The chain of rigs or the chain of controllers is going to be separated from other elements. But the most important thing about a controller is that we want this controller to control the joint. Otherwise, it's not going to be doing what we want it to do to make sure that this thing controls the joint we're going to be using very like node based a very node based approach that the unreal is very famous for so i'm going to drag and drop this lid control right here and i'm going to get the control 
by getting the control, we're getting the information from that control. And as you can see, this guy has a transform node. Remember the transform node from Maya? That's why all knowing all of these things is important. Otherwise, it gets confusing. But if you know what things make, then it becomes a lot easier. So we have this transform node. And we know that we want to move this lit joint. So I'm going to grab this lit joint. Again, get. Or sorry, not get in this case. In this case, I'm going to be using another one that is called. I'm just going to right click and look for set transform. And this is going to be of the set relative transform. Is this a one? No, it's not this one. We're going to right click on this guy and we're going to go for air. Get transform control. We need to get a transform control. Where is it? Where is it? If we want to control this, as I was mentioning with this control transform, we're going to drag and drop the, the lid joint and we're going to set the bone. And by connecting the execution right here and the transform into the value, now whatever happens to the, the controller, if we grab the controller, it's going to be modifying what the joint is going to be doing on a one-to-one -one ratio. So if we open this 90 degrees, as you can see, we're going to be opening the lid of our chest 90 degrees. And we need to do the exact same thing for multiple elements. Here's how we're going to do it. In order to do it, we're just going to go to the handle. For instance, this left handle, we're going to create a new control on the handle. There we go. That's the left handle uh, joy control. There we go. Yep. We're going to change the shape. In this case, I'm going to make this a blue. The handles are going to be blue. I'm going to change the shape. It's also going to be a, a circle thick. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees as well. This one, I'm not going to make it bigger. Usually when you're making your controllers, you want the most important ones to have the most like controls in this case. So I think a size of three should be more than enough. As you can see, it's on the X axis. So that's perfectly fine. We're going to shift P to unparent it. And this one right here, we're of course going to drag it over here. We're going to get the control. We're going to grab the left uh, handle joint, uh, drag it over here, set the bone, and we just keep going on the little chain. So we set this bone and set this control right here. Ideally, ideally, you want to have the order in which the elements are happening. So the most important one is going to be the chest joint, the, the base joint that we're going to have here on our scene. Let me give myself a little bit more space so that you guys can see. So if I grab the chest joint, I'm just going to get new control. That one's going to be, again, the circle thick. Let's rotate this. This one, actually, we need to rotate 90 degrees on X because it's supposed to be, or I believe it's on Z. There we go. It's on Z. And this one's going to be really big. So we can lock the scale, by the way, so that everything, like when we move one value, all of the values are moved together. So 10 should be fine. Let's see where it is. I will probably make it a little bit bigger. That's oh, actually not on the 90. There we go. So 90 on X, let's go 12, uh, probably 15. There we go. So I know or I, what I want to make sure is that this big ring right there moves or modifies all of the elements of my chest. So again, we shift P to unparent it. We grab this control right here, get control. We grab the chest joint, right click and or sorry, not right click, just a drag and drop. We're going to set the joint. And when the forward solve starts, we're just going to grab whatever values we have right there. Then we're going to grab the values from the lid. Then we're going to grab the values from the left handle. And we have to do the same thing for the right handle. So very quickly here, we're going to create a new control. This is also going to be a blue controller. There we go. Um, I believe we changed this to a circle thick. The size was a three. And the rotation was, uh, was it 90? No. It's 90 over here. There we go. So as you can see, now we have our two rings right there on the, on the chest and the back rig over here, which will modify the elements. Now we just need to shift P this guy, bring the right handle here, get the control, bring the right handle over here, set the bone, and we're going to be setting this bone so that this is the value. This is a super simple control rig. You can do a lot more things. There's IK solvers, uh, forward kinematic solvers, blend, not blend sheets, but there's a lot of like very fancy things that you can do here inside of Unreal as well. But again, the most important part for us right now is that we get access to this little elements right here. And if we want to move the chest, move everything, we're just going to be able to do so pretty much immediately one of the things that you're going to notice right there is that we need oh wait a second here 
careful on that one. Let's do control C a little bit. The rotator. There we go. Oh, what? There we go again. So right handle goes over here. Get control. Right handle. Set bone. Execute. And there we go. Very important thing here. See this like hierarchy that we have right here? We need to copy that hierarchy. That means that the lid and the handles need to be parented to the chest joint so that if we grab the chest joint and move this the whole chest moves and we can move it around and then it doesn't matter how we move it or how we rotate it we can also rotate the the chest around at any point i can grab any of these elements and open based on their rotation that is what makes rigging so freaking important if you follow these rules then you're going to be able to have a very nice result here with your very first Unreal Rig. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, my friends. Um, we are going to, as I mentioned, oh, careful here. Uh, let, uh oh, I might have modified something here that we shouldn't have. We, um, okay, let me show you how to solve this because what happened here is, as you can see, the location of the elements changed and the rotation also changed. We go. Need to fix this rotation. Position this prop. This is very, very common for, for elements or for things to happen. Make sure that the handles are where they're supposed to be. Like I messed up the handles as, as well. So we just need to grab this controllers right here. Let's bring the rotators back to their original position, in this case that's not the original position, when they rotate them back. There we go, my bad, the problem was the compile option, it was not like working properly. So um, yeah, cool. So now things are solved, the only thing that's a little bit wrong here is this controller right here that has the wrong rotation, let's just set it up uh, properly and there we go. So. That's it. With this, we now have our control rig ready. And again, as I mentioned in the next uh, like video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the sequencer to create uh, the sequences that we can use to animate our chest here inside of Unreal. So yeah, that's it, my friends. Hopefully, hopefully you liked the video so far. And uh, I know this is a very complicated topic. If you manage to get all the way to the end, congratulations. You're doing something that not a lot of people are doing, and that's going to make you a better artist. So yeah, it's all for your benefit, my friend, learning and understanding all of these concepts. Try to follow along if you're doing so, and I'll be happy to see your result in our Discord channel. Don't forget to join. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave us a comment if you liked the video so far or this series so far. And also let me know what other things would you like to learn. I'm going to be seeing you back on the next one. Bye-bye.